Hey, good people. This is the Confessions of a Nail Tech podcast. I'm your host, Rashida H. Muhammad, nail tech affectionately known as Ra. I have so much to share with you this evening. Welcome. Let's get started. Hey, good people. Nails by Ra here. As promised from episode three, I said I would spill the tea on why the nail industry is dominated by the Asian culture. After doing research, I found myself recanting some things that I may have said about Asian-owned salons. Surprisingly enough, Black-owned salons and Asian-owned salons have a common ancestor. You ready? Let's get into it. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Did you enjoy your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Honestly, I don't know what day it is most of the time. If it weren't for this podcast, I really wouldn't know what day today is. (laughs) But I hope you enjoyed whatever day it is until you got back to me today. But anyway, I sat with myself since the last episode and I got into the thick of a burning question that I am always asked. Whenever I get a new client or it comes up in conversation and they first grill me about why I chose to be a nail technician and I'm black and uh, yada, 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 I used to not know the answer to the question that they would ask me. Sometimes I didn't care. And when I did answer, it was less than sophisticated. But I am always asked, why are most nail salons owned by Asians or Some of my clients will say owned by Chinese. I say Asian because not all salons are Vietnamese, not all salons are Chinese, and it's very rare to see Chinese run nail salons anyway. But I digress. I want you to think about something here. A quick history lesson, if you will. Can you tell me how the Vietnam War, an American actress, and nail salons are all connected. No? Well, I'm gonna tell you. Well, in 2019, a filmmaker and activist, Adele Free Fam, debuted a documentary called Nailed It. I'm gonna leave the information to this documentary because it is really good. Um, The documentary explored the boom of Vietnamese-owned nail salons in the late 70s. So the Vietnam War, which lasted from 1955 to 1975, was a conflict war between Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam. Many Vietnamese immigrants came to the U.S. and lived in refugee camps. Actress Tippi Hendren, you might remember her from the Alfred Hitchcock series and more famously known for her role in The Birds, was involved in a charity work in Sacramento, California. Um, It was called the Weimar Hope Village, the refugee camp. And she was there to help these women find jobs in Southern California. So these first 20 women, her goal was to help the women establish a way to make a way for their, a living for their family. But when she got there, the women admired her nails, her beautiful long nails so much that the idea came to teach these women how to do nails. So she introduced them to her personal manicurist to teach them the trade, which was nail technology. So with the help and influence of actress Tippi Hendren, she helped these 20 women learn a skill, a trade, and eventually become licensed nail technicians in the US. So the second wave of refugees arrived in 1975 after the fall of Saigon. And by the 80s, Asian immigrants were business owners, nail technicians. All right, you hear me, you catch my drift. So for more info on the Nailed It documentary and screening times, you can visit www.nailedit.com. Again, I will link this in the description for this episode. Please check it out because it answered a lot of questions for me and also raised awareness about why a lot of the salons in this eight billion dollar industry is dominated by Asian culture. It has a rich history as to why. Now, imagine 
seeking refuge in another country because your home country is at war. Constant battle, bombing, killing, raping, slaughtering of human bodies, and you need out. So you seek refuge in another country. You come to this new country and you don't speak the language, but you have family members who already live here. They have learned a skill. They have mastered this skill. They have marketed this skill and are making a living and creating a cultural wave while dominating a growing field. You see, there's room. So I couldn't stop scrolling and reading as I put this information together for y'all. Like the more I knew, the more I felt compelled to, to share this information because it was so riveting. And it again, it answered so many questions that I had regarding the industry. And it was, it was a pleasure to know that we share a common ancestor. And I won't say ancestor because this woman, these people are still alive, but I say ancestor in regards to the beginnings and the origins of uh, black owned nail salons. We, we're connected and we do work better together. So I did mention that Asian owned salons and black owned salons have a common ancestor. I'll get back to that after this break. You're probably listening and thinking, now, Ra, you a sister and you working in the salon. Why did you dedicate an entire episode to tell me why the Asian population owns this area that you are trying to thrive in? Because when you know the history, when you know the history of something, you have an advantage because now you can make educated moves. Okay? And I feel that it is important to share this history so that we can stop feeling like going to a black owned nail salon in protest is something to live up to. I would much rather you come to a black owned nail salon because it is your preference, not your protest. I honestly don't care that you started coming to a black owned nail salon because you can't stand the way that black women are treated in other salons. We've been here. Black owned nail salons have been here. And the purpose of this episode is to educate people on how we can move together. And even if we cannot move together with a certain ethnic group, know that it can be done for Black women. I shared this because I needed to explain that the reason why the Vietnamese have dominated and boomed in this industry was out of circumstance. It was circumstance. You know, you can't control what's happening in the political environment back in your home country. And you really can't control, really, you can't control much of anything when your country decides to go to war. You can protest as much as you want to. You can raise hell as much as you want to. And the government will eventually listen. But in the meantime, you are worried about trying to feed your family. You are more so concerned about your own well-being. Self-preservation is king when it comes to those kinds of situations. So I say we could look to the Asian culture as an example that it can be done. I say this because to this day, a lot of people who are migrating to the U.S. are finding jobs in service industries or skilled trades because sometimes these jobs are looked over by the regular American population. These are luxuries. These are things that we do for leisure. These aren't things that some of us look to as a viable source of income. You know, I can't tell you how many times people turn their nose up at to me when I say, oh, I'm a nail technician. Oh, well, do you own a salon? And I say, no, not right now. And they pretty much look down like, oh, you're just a nail technician. Nail technicians make good money, just like your plumber, just like your electrician. It is a skilled trade. You have to go to school for it. You have to become licensed. You have to go through the this you have to go through the ringer to become a skilled professional skilled traded professional so i wanted to share this just so that you know and had a better understanding for the history of nail technology yes nail technology goes beyond 19 or goes it predates 1970s 1975 but prior to that 
you know, getting your nails done, again, that was a leisure, that was a luxury. It was not a necessity and it was very expensive to get a simple manicure. So what the Asian culture has done, they were able to streamline a service that would be $50 and turn it to $10 and $15 and get you in and out by 10 or 15 minutes. That is incredible, especially when you have high volume. So think about that the next time you try to discredit an Asian-owned salon. As mentioned before, our common ancestor is Olivette Robinson. Olivette Robinson was the co-owner with Charlie Vo of a joint Black-owned and Vietnamese-owned nail salon called Mantrap, which combines salon services for Black and Asian women. See, the more you know, the more you grow. You can Google this information. You can search this information. I went so far as to checking out the UCLA Labor Center study. So the UCLA Labor Center conducted a study of nail salon workers and the nail industry. This was back in 2018, 2018. So I highly suggest reading it for yourself because I am still unpacking the wealth of knowledge presented by Preeta Sharma, Saba Wahid, Vina Nguyen, Lena Steptic, Raina Oriana, Liana Katz, Sabrina Kim, and Katrina Lapira. These group of studies was phenomenal. It was a wonderful read. And I think I'll link that in the episode description as well. But listen, share this information so the next time the question poses, why are most nail salons owned by Asians or the Chinese? You have an answer. Also in this finding, I learned that the boom in immigration from the Vietnam War lasted for some time. And again, to this day, there are still immigrants coming over to the States and taking these kinds of jobs and becoming entrepreneurs. So I never downplay anybody's choice to become an entrepreneur, especially in the field of nails, because again, it is an $8 billion industry. There is so much room for everybody here. I'm telling you, the proof is here. It's in the statistics. It's, it's, in, the, it's in it. You can see it. And it came over in three waves. The first wave were people who were educated in doctors and people who had these kinds of jobs and positions already. And the second wave of immigrants were people who um, were lower education, some from rural areas and barely spoke English. And then the third wave were political prisoners, people who were, you know, not so great, and a group of Chinese amongst other who came over. So you think about this and you already have family who is here and established, you come in and it is a way to learn a skill and a means to provide for your family once you get to a new place. Trust me, I, I'm, I'm quite sure. I had, I'll, I'll say this, moving from state to state was a challenge. I could only imagine what it would be like moving from this country to another country and getting reestablished and I'll say this, a country that is not English speaking. So for example, if I just picked up today and decided to move to Brazil and I got to Brazil and I could not speak Portuguese and I tried to make it, you know how difficult that would be? So just think about that. Put that into context the next time. The next time you want to downplay and try to you know, downplay one ethnic group while trying to big up another. You know, I've always appreciated people coming to black owned nail salons, but what I could not appreciate was the down talk of another Asian owned nail salon. And I'm guilty of it too sometimes, but that was before I educated myself and was able to change my mind. So there's power in that, power in a changed mind. I know we covered a lot today, but I wanted to come back with you for a quick recap, just in case anything slipped through the cracks. Point one, the Vietnam War, trippy Hendren, and nail salons are related in regards to creating an industry that generates billions of dollars. Point two, nail services were once luxury services and much, much more expensive than they are now and before the boom in Asian-owned salons, creating affordable and fast services. Point three, Mantrap 
was a joint black and Asian owned salon still operating today across the United States and Canada. Four, although the industry is owned by Asian culture, it is heavily influenced by black and Latinx. So before you make fun of the next salon, remember the history. Thank you for tuning in to the Confessions of a Nail Tech podcast. I've been your host, Rashida H. Muhammad, nail tech affectionately known as Ra. Make sure you tune in next week, Tuesday, for our next episode. Looking forward to hearing from you. Make sure in the meantime to subscribe to the Nails by Ra page. Also visit me at www.nailsbyra.com and stay in the loop at Nails by Ra across the board on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Until next time.